Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and forever. Today the church celebrates as a solemnity the birth of St. John the Baptist, the greatest prophet that ever lived. Among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist, said our Lord in Matthew 11, verse 11. When John was born, it had been centuries since the Jews had had a real prophet. You have to go back to around the 5th century B.C., about the time of the prophet Malachi, to find a true prophet before John. The news of St. John's birth was also well known. It was talked about in all the region of Judea, as we read just a minute ago in Luke 1, verse 65. The people knew of his miraculous conception to an old, sterile couple, to Saints Zechariah and Elizabeth, and they knew that, that he had been sent in the spirit and power of Elijah, as the angel had said in Luke 1, verse 17. So St. John was sent as a new Elijah for a new exodus. The new exodus meant that God was about to deliver or to save his people in a very special way, in a way reminiscent of how he had saved them from the Egyptians centuries before. And in his public ministry, John even dressed like Elijah the prophet, as we read, for example, in Matthew 3, verse 4, and compare it to Elijah's dress, which we read in the Old Testament, where it says he wore a, a garment of hair cloth with a belt of leather about his loins, they said, about Elijah in 2 Kings 1, verse 8. And so John the Baptist dressed the same. So people knew that when they saw John the Baptist, they were looking at a new and a special prophet, someone clearly sent by God. And the angel Gabriel had told Zechariah that John would, quote, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. That's Luke 1, verse 17. So a big part of St. John's mission was to preach moral repentance and spiritual renewal, just like Elijah had done before him. And those two go together, by the way. You know, true spiritual awakening or spiritual renewal is tied to sincere moral repentance and vice versa. True moral repentance is tied to true spiritual renewal. Anyone who tries to separate spiritual growth or spiritual renewal from morality, from living a virtuous life, is deluding themselves. The two go together. With all that said, something that we don't often realize is that John the Baptist was, in a certain sense, even more popular than our Lord in the first century uh, among the Jews. The first century historian, Jewish historian Josephus, talks more about John the Baptist than he does about Jesus. And as we already mentioned, John the Baptist was essentially famous from the time he was conceived. Everyone knew that his father had seen a vision in the temple, and everyone knew that his mother had conceived him miraculously. John's fame went through the roof when he began his public ministry in the year 29 or 30 AD. St. Mark tells us that all the people of Jerusalem and Judea went out to the wilderness to be baptized by him. That's Mark 1, 5. And St. Luke adds that everyone was wondering if he was the Messiah, the Christ. Luke 3, verse 15. St. John's true greatness can be seen, however, mainly in two things. One, that he prepared the way for the coming of our Lord with his preaching of repentance and baptizing people. So embracing John and his mission, the people actually humbled themselves. They confessed their sins, and in doing that, they were more open then to seeing and embracing the Messiah, the true Messiah. John's greatness can also be seen in that, too, he got out of the way when Jesus came on the scene. He got out of the way. The proof that he was a real prophet was that he acknowledged that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that he stepped aside when Jesus began his preaching and his teaching and working miracles. So he gave up the spotlight when God came onto the scene and then he pointed everyone who came to him, he pointed them to Jesus. He, meaning Jesus, must increase I, John, must decrease, he would say, John 3, verse 30. It's a great spirituality to have, uh, by the way. Jesus must increase, I must decrease. If we lived that out in our lives, I think we'd be much happier and we'd be much more at peace and we'd easily become saints as well. It's true that people will be drawn to us at times if we're disciples and followers of Christ, but 
Our job is always to point them to Jesus. Our glory is found in bringing others to Jesus and to Our Lady, not in bringing them to ourselves. We have to remember that. St. John the Baptist pointed people to our Lord, and then again, he stepped aside. But then he did what any faithful follower of Christ can do if they want to get martyred. He essentially entered into politics. Uh, how did he do that? He actually began to preach to King Herod. He preached reform to King Herod Agrippa, basically, uh, excuse me, Herod Antipas, uh, regarding marriage, essentially. He preached reform to him, and he paid for it in the same way that St. Thomas More did when he paid for his position on marriage. He paid for it with his head. So if anyone who wants to become a martyr, you know where you can go, enter into politics. It's a guaranteed sanctity. One of the main messages we can take away from the life of St. John the Baptist is that God never forgets his people, even if he seems to remain silent for years, as he did in the time between Malachi and the Annunciation of the Angel to Zechariah, centuries. Even if God seems to remain silent, He's always with us and He never forgets about us. He never abandons us. And God also is not always in a rush either. Let's remember that too. Uh, John's parents weren't able to conceive for many years before they had him. And even after his birth, uh, John was in the wilderness for 30 years before God revealed him to Israel, before he began his public ministry, just like our Lord Jesus, 30 years of silence with Our Lady before he began his public ministry as well. So the Lord is in no rush as far as his plans go, and yet his timing is always perfect at the same time. So let's learn to have God's patience as well. Let's learn to remain faithful in the midst of adversity, even in the midst of years of adversity as Saints Zechariah and Elizabeth were. Let's also learn to grow in that virtue of patience as well. And let's ask Our Lady for the grace to be able to adopt that spirituality of St. John, that Jesus must increase and I must decrease. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now, Mary.